Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Stasia Bliss. We are talking about Kundalini and awakenings and managing that force. Once it awakens, call that your life force energy. It's not unlike a river. So I'm here at the Jordan River where I live right now. And this river is full right now. It is not always this full, but we are just after the winter melt and it's getting fuller and it's it's really going fast and it's deep. So I like to think of when the rivers are flowing like this, this is an influx of life to the valley, right? The water is life. It's bringing a greater flow into all the reservoirs, right? From the snow melt. And during the winter, I mean, the snow is falling. This is the time of year during the winter when we're indoors while the snow is falling, right? And it's not, we don't really reap the rewards of the life that's snowing down into the mountain, unless you're a skier, until, you know, the summer comes and the water runoff goes and fills the reservoir and we, you know, obviously uh, take it through its filtration and drink it. So this is very metaphorical and cool to contemplate how uh, life force energy comes and channels into us during the times of solitude. So during the times that we take for ourselves to sit either in nature or in meditation, um, somebody asked me yesterday in a comment, do you have to do Kundalini yoga to work with this energy or do you ha can you just meditate? Okay, so let me answer that and I'm going to address that in terms of a, a raging river, let's say. And this is going really fast, but you know, we, we don't have white caps or anything. Um, so again, in meditation, you are opening the channels. You are becoming aware. You are opening yourself up. You are sitting and let's say all of your subtle spinal centers, your chakras, they're closed down to your capacity and as you're meditating you're breathing and you're bringing conscious awareness to them so they begin to dilate if you will they begin to open because there's consciousness there and consciousness is prana that's where the prana flows where we put our awareness so we begin to open the channels right like we begin to see the water melting we begin to see like we have to open up some of the dams or whatever to let some of the water flow so now we have this river and it has to be able to contain it right in the riverbeds if there's too much flow at two times we'll have flooding right um, so they have different methods in place to gate or to slow down the flow or to direct it into the reservoirs, right? Um, to an extent, you can open those and feel those in meditation. And if you're really skilled, sure, you can sit in meditation and you can channel that energy to different parts of the body. Kundalini yoga, and I'm not talking about Yogi Bhajan Kundalini yoga because that's not the Kundalini yoga that I've ever practiced. I mean, I've practiced it, but my uh, training was in what well, my teacher, my tantric master, Sam, called uh, universal Kundalini because it's it's non-denominational. There's no specific set of like invocations or chants to deities or anything like that. And even though I do see mantra as invoking a divine within um, kundalini yoga practice is really just about uh, getting your mind to a place where you can move that life force energy yourself you can breathe it through your spine you can run it out the channels in your arms and legs you can open up the currents so that you don't have blockages there so that your tightness and your restriction in your mind and in your body opens and you can actually handle the force of more of you more of your life force um, if you're opening the channels and you can't manage it you don't know what to do with it this is where you can get into a place where you experience psychosis or extreme pain or overwhelm or you've opened your chakras and now see i think of kundalini yoga as really just a methodology and understanding of the process 
um, that happens and somebody messaged me uh, a client and friend yesterday saying um, something they were reading said kundalini has um, an awakening period an integration period and an expression period and i, I tend to agree with that um, so you awaken it and now you suddenly have more current you suddenly have more flow in your body and some of that's gonna to go to clear you out, right? It's gonna clear out old stuff. Well, if you don't know that that's what's happening and you don't have that drasta or that witness mentality that I've talked about in other videos going on, then you might just freak out. Like, why is this happening? Why is this going on? Why is this relationship stuff coming up? And you think you just had your meditation and it was lovely and then you went to your life and all this stuff started happening when they're intimately connected. And that's what Kundalini Yoga does, is it helps you connect the dots so that mentally you know what's happening. You understand the process of them, the chakras opening, and you know now how to integrate polarities. So in Kundalini Yoga, you're working with the spinal channels, you're working up Ida and Pingala, you're balancing opposites, you're balancing brain hemispheres, so that when something comes up, you can see it for what it is. Oh, this is a pattern clearing. Oh, I have more energy here, so now I get to work through this. I have access for more life flow energy and life flow, the current, the currency, the mama, the shakti, is moving the blockages, just like a river will come and move the blockages as it comes down, it will move things out of the way. So things that have been barriers to you even in your times of solitude, in your times of meditation, and maybe even especially, when the kundalini comes up, it, it starts to move those things out of the way. And sometimes we just gotta let it, gotta let it. And then integration is seeing the purpose, purposefulness, the reason why, the treasures, you know, integrating the treasures. And then we can take all of that that gets brought up for us and we can express, we can be creative. We are now accessing more life flow. So we can put a boat on that river and we can sail it, right? So just some thoughts today from this, oh my gosh, the smell of honeysuckle out here is crazy, you guys. It's so beautiful, so, so beautiful. And smell is a root chakra sense. So beautiful smells are really grounding. So right now, wherever you are, I'm sure there's some beautiful smells. So get out there and smell them, get grounded, get that root chakra feeling safe and secure in your body, at home in yourself, and give thanks to the beauty. I'm grateful for the flow of life into this valley that will uh, keep us hydrated and, um, all summer. And um, that's true about when we open the channels of ourself. This keeps us nourished, hydrated, blessed throughout the seasons of our life. So thank you for joining me. If you want to meet for a personal session, I've got my email website down below. If you liked this video, let me know. Share it with other people and I'll see you again tomorrow. Much love. Namaste.